People who suffer from cancer, heart disease or eye issues may be able to have much better outcomes in future. Sing Health and Duke NUS are collaborating on regenerative medicine, which looks at restoring, repairing or replacing damaged cells, tissues or even organs. They've launched an institute and a center to develop the therapies and tools before applying the solutions. For more on this, we're joined by one of the leaders of the effort, Professor William Huang. Professor, Professor Huang, tell us how regenerative medicine and cell therapy work. Thank you so much, Don. As you said, regenerative medicine looks at restoring, repairing, or replacing these damaged cells, tissues, and organs. And as we get older, our cells will die and our tissues and organs will grow weaker. We can help to promote regeneration using molecules, drugs, and other methods. It's like dialing back the clock on cells and tissues to become what they used to be. And one of the promising approaches in regenerative medicine is cell therapy, the use of cells to treat patients as living drugs that will continue to grow and live inside us to repair tissues. But besides that, immune cells can also be grown to, and trained to fight against diseases like cancer. This has been a big revolution in medicine and many patients around the world have been benefiting from the use of cells for treatment. For this reason, we launched today the Singhub Duke NUS Regenerative Medicine Institute of Singapore, which we call Remedis, which will focus on research in developing new technologies, not just cells for regeneration, and also the Singhealth Duke NUS Cell Therapy Center, known as the SDCT, which will focus on training and enabling clinical teams to bring to patients the best that cell therapy has to offer. Well, what kind of conditions are they most useful for, these uh, for regenerative medicine, Professor Huang? Well, regenerative medicine has been applied in age-related diseases and chronic conditions, for example, bone marrow and blood disorders to regenerate the blood cells of the bone marrow, eye diseases like corneal disease, as well as acute and chronic wound healing like burns. It's also being studied for future clinical use in heart disease, muscle wasting, and diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. Cell therapy has also been seeing a huge boom. For example, immune cells have been genetically engineered to train them to target cancer cells and used to treat diseases like leukemia, lymphoma, and myeloma, as well as many other cancers. And there are many in development, including chimeric antigen receptor, CAR T-cells, T-cell receptor modified T-cells, and so on. In my own research, I've been exploring if blood stem cells can also be grown outside the body to speed up the recovery of patients after blood stem cell transplants. So there are so many potential uses for this. Uh, Professor, based on the studies and trials that have been done, uh, what kind of outcomes can be expected? Well, actually, probably a thousand patients have received these treatments with immune cell therapies and blood cell expansion in recent years in clinical trials, and the results look really promising. Our team in the Singapore General Hospital was the first site in Southeast Asia to be approved for the FDA-registered CAR T-cell therapy and many of these patients receiving CAR T cell therapy have attained control of leukemia and lymphoma when they were previously resistant to all forms of chemotherapy. Professor, thank you very much for sharing your time with us and, and those perspectives on regenerative medicine and cell therapy. We've been speaking there to Professor uh, William Huang. He is from the Duke NUS uh, Regenerative Medicine Institute in Singapore. Singapore and the Cell Therapy Center.